Hey guys, I'm Rob Bass and this is Not Mitten Box and today we're going to take a look at one of the most controversial and mysterious figures in toy history and that figure is Wonder Bread He-Man. Now, Mass Universe fans around the world know who Wonder Bread He-Man is. For you guys who don't know, sometimes he's referred to as the Savage He-Man. It's a figure who is brown haired, He-Man face, no armor, comes with a couple of burgundy weapons. The first image online back in the infancy of internet <laughs> chat rooms and He-Man groups back in the day in the late 90s, this guy posted an image saying, hey, I got this figure, I don't know what it is. Does anyone know about this figure? Anyone know about this promotion? Does anyone know anything about it? And he posted this picture, and we see it right there. It's He-Man with brown hair and a shrink wrap bag, and he's got the little Mattel pamphlet and some burgundy weapons. Now these weapons you might recognize from the Manny Faces package back in the day. They had a special Manny Faces that came out had Manny weapons basically. And uh, also basically just in Castle Grayskull repaints. People start going nuts. This, this can't be real. It isn't real. Uh, oh I know what it is. It's from Wonder Bread. And people start referring to it as Wonder Bread He-Man because he was a giveaway when you bought Wonder Bread. The truth is Wonder Bread did do a promotion but it was for trading cards, and I actually own trading cards myself. And so, that's kind of like a dead end, and one makes a joke, and then when uh, they did the special edition and Master Wars Classics version of Wonder Bread He-Man, Savage He-Man, he has the Wonder Bread logo hidden on his black Zodiac armor. And that's cute, it's funny, because the whole idea there, they don't know. Mattel claims that they have no record. Uh, fortunately, I do have a problem with that. I, I know for a fact that Mattel records are probably some of the worst. Uh, they had nothing. Matter of fact, when they did the commemorative series of figures, they had to ask fans because they didn't know what to do. They didn't have nothing to re reference from. Now, you guys all know that in the late 70s, Mattel didn't want to be bothered dealing with George Lucas and passed on the Star Wars franchise, which is dumb. But they didn't know at the time, and here it is. Star Wars becomes the biggest franchise in the world. And Mattel didn't want to lose an opportunity. Now, Conan the Barbarian had been in negotiation to be a film since the early 70s. And the late 70s, it picked up steam. They had a director by 1978, 79. They had already got a director. And they were going to make this movie. Things were in play. Screenplays were being passed. And Mattel was like, we need to get in on this. Now, of course, Mattel thought about it and said, well, that's an already movie. We have to pay licensing. We could just make our own fantasy thing based on those famous paintings by Frank Frazetta. We have our own staff, we can do our own little thing. And that's where the whole Conan Mattel debacle actually Conan the Barbarian sued in 82, uh, the, the production company, and of course Mattel won. The thing is that they, they refer to, uh, Roger Sweet refers to that when he created the first three prototypes of the He Man figure, you have a military guy, space guy, like a science fiction guy, and a barbarian guy. And of course, the barbarian guy went out. Here's what I want to bring up. In every stage of the way of making the He-Man franchise, the He-Man figure, the lead hero, Roger Sweet's prototype has dark hair. Mark Taylor's artwork for the prototype of this barbarian lead has dark hair. Now, that's not a coincidence because he was based on a Conan. Like Conan always had dark hair. You can see this picture of Mark Schwarzenegger. You can tell the dark brown hair. What does that lead to the whole Wonder Bread figure? Let me continue. As the prototype stages of the figure kept coming and coming, they did away with the hair. They put a horned helmet. They were working their way to getting to He-Man. Eventually, they liked certain things. One did not have hair. They got rid of the helmet because of the pointy edges. And you get what you see that is He-Man. Now, I believe wholeheartedly between that stage and the final stage, someone messed up. Was like, hey, did we tell the factories that they were switching his hair to blonde? I believe his hair was going to be around the whole time. And they got samples back, maybe a couple of thousand figures, and they're all brown hair. Stop the production. He has to be blonde hair. No hero can have brown hair. It won't work. Now, if you guys are into Final Fantasy, you also know that the lead character from Final Fantasy VII, Cloud, was originally supposed to have black hair, dark hair, 
they ended up changing it to blonde near the end, and he was supposed to have less pointy hair. I mean, they were just working it out. And then in Final Fantasy X, the lead character was also going to have black hair, and they changed it to blonde as well. It's a trend. Uh, at last minute, you can make changes because you feel that maybe the blonde would be better. And He-Man's hair, no honesty, is blonde, but it's a dirty blonde. It's a dusty whatever. When you take that into consideration, you have what you have. Wonder Bread Heeman, what I believe, was some overstock of figures they can't use. And now what makes me believe this, if you take a look at this image, this is the prototype image of a figure for that will become Buzz Off, but is referred to as Bug Off. And he was originally a character that was supposed to have a helmet with a regular head underneath. Now you can see here that that's a brown headed Heeman. Now that's not definitive, like, oh my god, that's it, but where they get it from? I mean, you know, when you're doing mock-ups, you take the figures you have around. How come it wasn't just a regular blonde He-Man that they had? Why was it this brown-haired He-Man? And it's so, if you look at it, it looks so much like what you see with Wonder Bread He-Man. Now, where did this package come from? Where does the buck bag, or the, the shrink rack bag for He-Man come from? I believe maybe promotions. Back in the day when people went to Toy Fair, you know, we always get swag. But now, people like us go to Toy Fair, and we are collectors. We are toy collectors, and we do reviews. But back in the day, none of these people were toy collectors. They were press, or they were businessmen. Here's what are toys like. It's Here's, this is free, take this figure. You know, give it to your kids, and that's what they did. That's why you see a lot of these great Wonder Bread Human are beat up. Now look at this figure from my, my friend, Jeremy DeWitt. He lent me uh, images from his... Wonder Bread He-Man he bought. And look how beat up this figure is. This figure is old. You see the paint chipped out of the hair and you can see that it's just rubber underneath. It's not blonde. Even if you customize certain figures, the the material you need to get rid of yellow out of that hair would corrode the rubber. So it's not just painted over. This figure is that color. And of course, you know, what does that leave for the armor? Now, you know, as you can see, the original image, he didn't have armor. Now, this is the easy one. Everyone knows that when the weapons pack came out, the only good guy armor was the Black Zodak armor. So, he man couldn't be alone. He had black boots, so they threw on the black armor. Guys, there you have it. I wish it was as simple as saying, hey, look, the back of this package has Savage He-Man right there. But it doesn't. And this is just my theory, but I honestly believe that Mattel just had these guys lying around and either gave them out to office workers, people who worked at Mattel, People who sell these figures aren't the original owners. Sometimes if they are the original owners, they don't know where they had it. They just had it in their collection. No one's ever asked them, is your parents ever work in the business? Did they own a toy store? Did they happen to work for Mattel? I mean, these are things that people can't bring up. And most of the Mattel workers don't remember the early stages. I mean, Roger Sweet wrote a book. Mark Taylor remembers things the way they want. But there's stages in the game that you guys just can't remember. It's been 30 plus years. So take that into consideration, and you know what? I 100% believe in Wonder Bread He-Man, and not that he's Wonder Bread, but that he does exist. Hopefully, my findings are, uh, you know, good for you guys. And uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Leave me a comment. Leave me a video response. Follow me on Twitter at Alt Minds or AltMinds.com. And always, they're your toys. Play with them the way you want.